How could you see him? Because I was inverted. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Maverick Concepts Asuka. This video is going to be quite a bit different from my others. Typically over these last 11 years, I've come out here and given you as much detailed information about the knife I'm presenting as I possibly can and background information and stories about the maker behind it. However, this time around, I'm finding that to be quite a challenge because there's almost no information about this knife online except for the one auction post that they made about it on their Instagram when they were selling it. And the business website for Maverick Concepts has an extremely limited About Us section, which basically only says that each knife is made by hand, the maker's first name, Nick, I guess the single name thing works if you're super famous, Oprah, but if you're not Cher, it may not. And that he's a family man with a picture of his super adorable young son named Maverick, and that he tends to drink beer when he's not making knives. Nick, not Maverick. Even though there isn't a lot of info to work with, I think it's very much worth a look because it's it's a damn slick knife and seemingly well-made. Huge thanks once again to my buddy Derek who lent me this knife in a large group of knives in order to make videos on overviews and reviews. So I think you should definitely go follow him on Instagram and validate the hard work he's been putting into his photography lately and the daily cutesy games he plays to stitch together a theme for his shots. It's always a, uh, a fun theme that he's going with. And I like to see people having fun when they're talking about their, their favorite hobbies on Instagram and photographing stuff and not just going, hey, look at this cool thing I've got. He, he really has fun with the whole thing. And uh, you could tell that he really does enjoy the community as much as he loves his knives. Now, let's do a quick TLDW, and then after the pros and cons are all done with, then we'll go over the limited specs that I found available on this knife, and then I'll give you my final thoughts and overall review of the knife at the end. So, TLDW, pros. I really like the size of this. Now, I don't always go for a smaller knife. However, there are a lot of times that I will look at a knife in terms of its ability to be beneficial as an EDC. And I think that this certainly fits that bill. It's got about a 3.3 inch blade. Uh, overall length, I'm not sure. I can always give it a measure when I'm done here and then I'll, I'll pop it up on the screen during the specs portion because uh, that measurement was not given by the maker on his Instagram when he was selling it. So I'll give it a quick measure and let you know. Uh, I'd say it's probably right around seven and a half, seven and three quarter inches overall. So it's, it's on the smaller side of medium and I really, really dig the size overall. I really like the blade shape. It's a very functional blade shape. So here we have kind of a modified sheep's foot, which is going to have a little bit of belly to it. Um, it's going to have a nice squared cross section at the tip. So it's good for like slicing into uh, packaging, into boxes and stuff like that. It's going to be a really useful knife for kind of your everyday stuff. You know, maybe you're not going to take this out with you hunting or camping or something that's very user specific. 
Although I, I, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work or excel at any of those things, but this is just going to be a good all around, I can do pretty much anything with it kind of blade profile. Another pro is the overall build quality is really, really nice. Now, the knife is extraordinarily lightweight because, as you see, most of the titanium has been completely skeletonized and beautifully done. So there's not a lot of knife here. Whee! Most of the weight is in the blade, which does make it a little bit... I thought it was going to be front-heavy, but it's not. I have to put my finger just behind the pivot to find the balance point. And if I put it at the pivot, it's actually butt heavy. So it's got a little Kim Kardashian going on there. I would not have expected that. What did he put like a lead weight back there or something? I don't know. That's kind of nuts because that little piece of titanium, little, it's actually, you know, quite big, but that titanium uh, really should be lighter weight then that blade, the blade is obviously, it's steel, it's longer, it's larger, so I would have thought that it'd be blade heavy, front heavy, but I was incorrect. Another thing that I like is that he chose an interesting group of materials. So you've got this really, really good looking and very well etched Damascus blade. I've been seeing a lot of blades online lately, a lot of Damascus, where the etching really isn't done with high contrast, and this is the way it should be. You've got black and silver. You don't have a muddy gray and light gray. You don't have, you know, washed out areas where you can't tell where one steel is uh, separate from another. And he was able to achieve this with, with what looks like to be a fairly quick etch. What I'm going to assume, again, because, and this is information that even if his website was chock full of specs, this is not information that would normally be given by a knife maker, but I suspect he did the ferric etch, did it fairly quickly, uh, because I don't really feel anything but a flat, smooth surface here. Um, so he didn't etch away at a lot of the steel. And then I think he probably did a coffee etch afterwards, which darkened up the lower steel to give you that really black dark look so anyway this is uh this is the look that i prefer this is the look that i go for when i etch my damascus i don't do a coffee etch i do it um in the original acid bath but i really like how that looks i'm not a big fan of kind of washed out patterns and just gray on gray and it just i don't know this is the way it should be it should be a nice Stark contrast. Anyway, so he took this intrepid Damascus, matched up with titanium, did some nice textures in the titanium, then apparently did a Cerakote job over it. I'm guessing maybe this is sniper gray. I'm not entirely too certain. I'm not very proficient on the, the various different color codes for Cerakote. And then he chose black Damascus for the pocket clip as well as for the backspacer. So you've got different looks, different textures, different patterns that yet somehow all come together really, really nicely. The other thing that I really like is his custom-made pivot. This is obviously not off the shelf. He has uh, custom-made uh, this hardware for this pivot, and it looks really, really good. So, uh, you know, I got to get uh, give another pro here, even though it probably could fall within the uh, build quality section. The action, I can't reverse flick it, sorry. The action on this is fantastic. Really, really, really nice. Very smooth. Perfect detent. Really, really nice and snappy without being overly strong. You know, you don't feel like it's a finger breaker at all. Now, for the cons, it's so lightweight that, unfortunately, there are people out there that will judge the quality of a product based on its heft. They feel like if it's heftier, it's higher quality, and that is not the case in almost anything that you're buying. 
This is lightweight because it is an EDC knife. It is made to be carried and not be cumbersome or in the way in any way, shape, or form. So while that's not a con for me, I can see where some people might pick it up and go, oh, it feels kind of cheap. You're an idiot. Anyway, sorry. Uh, I can say that because I'm not actually talking about anybody in particular. Anyway, uh, moving on. Another con for me is the fact that it doesn't have a flipper tab. With as well done as the detent and the action is, this would have felt really, 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 really good as a flipper. As it stands, you have two deployment options. You have the front flipper, which, as I always say, detracts away from the look of the knife when it's closed. It just looks awkward and ugly. And that's not a, a knock against what Nick has done and how he designs his knives. That is just an unfortunate byproduct of a front flipper, unless you're doing like a, a like the South Africans do, like uh, Andre Thorburn likes to do what most people call a top flipper these days. It's a front flipper, but the jimped area of the blade is actually in the same shape as the end of the scale. So you're flipping this way. So it, it the look blends in. I've just never been a fan of this. It just looks awkward. Uh, and the other deployment option is obviously the very well done thumb studs. Now, I don't know if these are press fit or if they are threaded, screwed together. Not entirely certain. And I just realized, and I, I know that I had written down the specs, but I, I just don't think I paid attention to it. I just realized that uh, these are zirconium, which is really, really cool. And it's got a nice little color shift there with the polished oil slicked finish to the zirconium. Nice little detail. Now, I have only taken one picture of this knife so far, so when I sit down to do the rest of the photography, I'm going to try to focus on the thumb studs and see if I can bring out the colors that are there as well, because that is very, very nicely done. I like little subtle things like that. Not everything has to be bright and crazy and loud like Timascus and Mokutai and stuff like that. That's one of the things I've always appreciated about Zerk is the fact that it's kind of subtle, and especially when it's done on such a small component like this, you would really have to spend time with this knife to have really discovered that. And that's really, really cool. Any other cons? No, I really, I don't have any other cons about this knife whatsoever. I think all the way around, it was well done. Let's get into the specs. And then after that, I can get to my personal thoughts and all the, uh, the yammering on and on and on and on. So what we have here is a 3.3 inch blade. The blade happens to be um, Chad Nichols Armor Core Intrepid. So it's a really nice high end steel. The blade is riding on ceramic bearings. You have zirconium. Oh, I didn't realize that either. The pivot is also zirconium. So it's the pivots and studs that are all zirconium. My apologies for not picking up on that. I think maybe just the finish of the pivot didn't give away immediately that they were zirconium. So very, very cool on that. Now that we've gotten past that, uh, hopefully I have taken the time to sit or remembered to take the time and sit down and measure the overall length and that would have been included off to the side there as well. Let's get a nice close look at the... Yeah, you know what? Some of that oil slick color is coming through, and I apologize for not noticing that earlier. Very cool and very dangerous work. I used to explain this a lot back in the old days in my old videos, but not a lot of people are working with Zerk anymore, so I don't get the opportunity as much these days. But with Zirconium... Uh, it's a major, major, major fire hazard. Whenever you're grinding steel, and more so when you're grinding titanium, uh, you get really hot sparks flying off your grinder, and it can land in a pile of dust and start a fire. And 
Zirconium is much worse because it burns hotter and burns longer. So those, those shavings that are basically flying embers flying through the air can actually still be fire hot when they land on the ground or land, you know, 10 feet away or something, much more likely than titanium or steel. So everything that, that we grind out there is, is dangerous to some degree, whether it's toxicity if, if you're breathing it in or it's being a fire hazard or something else. But zirconium, it's, it's really, really dangerous to the point where even when you go to buy it, like I think it's Alpha Knife Supply, um, they even have a disclaimer that, you know, they don't want, they don't want to just sell it to anybody. If you're like a hobbyist knife maker, it's working in, you know, your basement or something ridiculous like that. They won't sell it to you because they want you to have the proper safety precautions and, and hopefully not burn down your entire house if you make a mistake or you're not paying attention. And likewise, if you're using a vacuum system, like a lot of us do in our shops, you want to keep in mind that the the shavings that come off of the Timascus, I'm not Timascus, uh, the zirconium, are so hot that it could travel all the way through the the hoses of your vacuum system and make it all the way to the canister or the bag or whatever you're using. Shouldn't be a bag. That would be like for a woodworking set up. You want to actually have a canister. You want to have something that I'm forgetting the name of it right now, but it kind of uh, pre- it prevents what's immediately coming in that could be hot from coming in contact with what's already stored. Why am I blanking on the name of it? Oh my God, not a diffuser. Uh, oh gosh, darn it. Really? That's really going to bother the hell out of me. And also it should be going into a metal container, not into a plastic you know, trash bag or something. But either way, uh, it can make its way all the way through your vacuum system and still be hot enough to ignite what's stored inside of the vacuum system receptacle. So keep that in mind if you ever decide to start making knives and you're like, hey, I want to try zirconium. Uh, Super dangerous stuff. Not very fun. Okay. That was a hell of a long tangent that really didn't benefit anybody. (laughs) Sorry about that. Uh, Anyway, I think all around, all together, it's a really, really, really nice package. And here's the funniest thing. Out of all of the knives that Derek sent me, when I unpacked everything, initially, as I was just quickly looking at what he threw in there, this was the least appealing to me or the least interesting at that moment. And then I have a special section in my studio where I keep knives that are awaiting review. And I went over there to, to just to kind of, uh, you know, play touchy feely and get to know all the different knives that I had to review. And I picked this up and the more I played with it, the more I really, really liked it. This is definitely one that grew on me and it didn't take long. It took just a couple of minutes. The feeling of the knife in my hand, overall the way it was built, the action, and even though as as much as I hate front flippers, I don't like the awkward feeling of front flipping, this one is actually pretty nice. I mean, that detent is so snappy that... I almost always get it to full lock. I have a problem because as much as I don't like front flippers, I don't really carry them and I don't really use them that often. And I tend not to be able to flip them very, very well because of that. So there'll be a lot of them that I'll end up failing. I won't be able to get quite to full lock. I'll do it like that. That was a pretty good example. And this one seems to go almost every time because it is well done, that even a moron like me that does not prefer front flippers is able to manipulate it in that way and feel pretty secure about it. I also like the fact that he's got kind of a grunge look going on here. It's kind of a uh, a rudimentary kind of caveman sort of look. And then he dolls it up just a little bit with some Timascus here, some Timascus here, and then the touches of zirconium. I would have liked to have seen the pivots 
mirror polished. I think that would have added a little bit more. But again, he was going for subtlety here. So uh, I don't know if that would have really fit his, uh, his theme here. I do like the fact that the thumb studs are polished and it really shows off that Zerk a lot more. Lockup is nice. It's pretty early, but it's not, you know, dreadfully early. It's not, you know, scary in any way. And let's check his blade centering here. Pretty much dead on centered. And while he has maximized the blade length in the handle, you cannot reach the tip. You cannot snag the tip with your finger. That's great. And his backstage backspacer is a floating backspacer. Now, it's not very accentuated. You'd usually have a little bit more of a gap to really see that it's a floating backspacer. But uh, it's pretty, pretty tight in there. They still did a wonderful job. I think overall, this is a really, really cool knife. I don't think it's the kind where you go, oh my God, that is so amazing. That is so exciting. I've got to get my hands on one. And it just, you know, courses through you where you're like, oh my God, I've got to go find one. But I think if you ever held one, your opinion would be that this is a very, very impressive knife maker and a very, very impressive knife. And you would, if he, if you went to a knife show, I don't know if he displays at Blade Show or not, but if you went to a knife show and went to his table and you picked this up and you played with it for a minute or two, I can promise you that if you like how it looks and you like the size of it, that you would be so impressed with how it was made that you would most likely end up buying it right then and there on the spot. It's one of those knives. Not every knife sells itself well in pictures or in video, but you'll pick it up and you'll fondle it and go, wow, this was a lot nicer than I had been led to believe. And that's exactly how I feel about this. Even when I first saw it in person before really touching it or messing with it, I was like, okay, that's, that's, it's pretty neat, but it didn't wow me. Meanwhile, this was like a hidden gem in that package that Derek sent me, and I really, really dig it. This is absolutely 100% something that I would personally carry. I like it that much. And yeah, Derek's package had, you know, two different versions of the Brown Knives FSD, and it had some really cool skeletonized uh, H.R. Giger-themed Reich knives that were unbelievably machined, really crazy. I mean, they must have had you know, dozens and dozens of hours in the CNC to, to be machined the way that they were. So my mind was kind of there. And honestly, I was more distracted by the FSDs because I already love the FSDs. But this immediately, once I started playing with it, kind of captured my imagination, captured my heart. And I went, huh, <laughs> oh, that's pretty damn cool. I like pretty much everything about it. There is, there's nothing about this that would prevent me from buying it. Absolutely nothing. I would prefer if there was the addition of a standard flipper tab. And I, I can tell you right now, if I were in the market to be buying right now and I decided I wanted to order from this maker, I would ask him respectfully if he wouldn't mind making a modified version that was a flipper. Now, it could still have the front flipper and the thumb studs. That would be totally fine. I would just say, in addition to that, I'd really like to have a flipper tab. And if he were uh, willing to do that, I could absolutely see myself owning one of these made pretty much the same way, just with that one change. That's how cool I think this knife is. He did an excellent job. I do really hope that he updates his website a bit and gives us more information about his knife models, about the materials that he chooses, why he chooses them, and some more background information on himself, how long he's been making knives. And actually, I think it did say how long he was making knives. Unfortunately, unless you knew the date the website was launched, it didn't help you because he said, I think it said, I've been making knives for three years. And then he went off and said something else. Well, that only helps me if I know when you wrote that. 
Anyway, I'm not picking on it. I'm just saying I would love more information about him and his knives because I find his work to be that fascinating that I would love to suggest Maverick concepts to a lot of people, which is why I'm making this video. And I hope a lot of people message him. I hope a lot of people make a custom order and uh, fill up his books for the next year or two. And that I know a lot of times does happen when, when I tend to review something that I really, really like. And I, I hope he enjoys that success. I hope that ha that happens for him. But I just wish there was a little bit more information because nowadays a lot of people are iffy about buying knives online or commissioning customs online. And they want to feel like they're they're buying with as much background and information as they can possibly get before making an investment. So that's just my personal thoughts to the man himself. Anyway, I really dig the knife. I hope you guys did as well. Uh, I'll be back here in just a little bit. I've got a really cool prototype I want to share with everybody that I think is going to be a massive success when they are made available. So please do join me for that. And I'll see you on the next video.